Hi there and welcome to this my latest YouTube video and today we're going to talk about making photo books. Um, thank you so much for joining me. Um, I hope this video is some use to you if you're just starting a project, maybe you've made a photo book and it's gone wrong in the past or maybe you've never made one and you're intrigued to know what it's all about. Um, today's presentation is going to be about the concepts, the ideas behind making photo books, not the actual making of a photo book. That's going to come in the next uh, YouTube video that I make. And then I shall take you through the process of making a book in the Blurb software, which is a software I've been using for about 10 years to make my um, uh, photo books. There are certainly other ways um, of making them. You can make them in Lightroom, you can make them in InDesign, that kind of thing. Um, I've always used Blurb. I quite like it. I love the output. I love the books that come out of it. So um, sort of no reason for me to try anything different, really. So um, that will be the next video. But today it's more like the concepts behind um, how to think about putting the book together, um, the kind of images to use, the kind of processing words, all that kind of thing. But I'm going to talk you through it right from the basics through the, to the end of the book. Um, and hopefully when you come to the end of it, uh, you'll have a really good idea. So if this is the first time you've tuned in to me on a YouTube video, thank you very much. If you're a regular, thank you very much for coming back. Um, I am, I live in the Netherlands and I am now a sort of creative landscape photographer. I do a lot of um, ICM, intentional camera movement photography and multiple exposures. Um, a lot of it in the landscape, a lot of it very close to home. I like working in my local woods, sort of all with, within about 20 kilometres of where I live. Um, and I like just showing people the what they can see um, or what they don't see, in fact, <laughs> um, but what's staring them in, in front of their face. Um, I used to be a portrait and landscape photographer. Uh, portrait and wedding photographer sorry um way back when I used to live in the UK sort of just over 10 years ago so today's presentation is not aimed at those of you who are making photo books to publish okay I have not done that I'll send, send that out right now I do my photo books for myself to share with my clients um to sort of promote what I do or just as memories and that's kind of what I want this presentation to be for is for you to have an idea of how to set those kind of books out um, I'm sure there's people that are well much more versed than myself in um, producing in, uh, books for publishing um so but yeah don't go to me for that <laughs> um uh, hopefully in the near future, I will have a book coming out. But um, for the time being, please enjoy this presentation for the purpose of making things like photo books for yourself, for your family, um, to hold a project a little bit longer, um, to showcase some of your work, that kind of thing. So without further ado, I am going to share my screen and take you over to PowerPoint and my presentation here today, which is called Creating Photo Books, fairly obvious. Um, so here we'll just see a very small selection of the photo books that I mentioned before. I do work in Blurb an awful lot. So these are all books that are actually sitting on Blurb at the moment. You can go and access these and you will see the links later on at the end of the session. But if you want to go and have a look at any of them at any point, um, if you just put in Charlotte Bellamy Photography in Blurb, it should bring up at least one of my books and then you can see all the rest at the bottom. They're all open, uh, open season. You can go and view every single page. Some people only put uh, one or two pages up if they're trying to sell them. My books were primarily for myself, so they're not, uh, they have got prices on, but they are very high because uh, they're Blurb. Uh, personal books. So the first thing to think about is why you're making a photo book. And this goes in hand in hand with who you're making your photo book for. Um, and this is, you know, quite an important thing, really, because without these two elements, you you, you can't possibly have an idea about how to go forwards with how you're going to make the book. OK, so why are you making this photo book? It could be any number of reasons. So the first thing is to showcase a product uh, or a project. Sorry. Um, you know, we've all done many projects for ourselves. Um, you know, that could be what it's for to sell a product. Uh, if you're in business or even if you're doing something completely different for photography, you might want to take photos of your dog beds that you're selling on a market stall or your antique furniture that you've done up and you want to produce it into a little book that you can share. Maybe to document a holiday. We've all been on holiday. We all used to produce these beautiful photo books with real time photos. I used to come back and sit back from holiday and love putting those together. 
why not document your holiday in a um, digital photo book now? It might be just to hold memories. Um, you know, I we all have people we love um, and sometimes they disappear from our lives and it's lovely to have the memories to look back on um, or just, you know, a wedding, a, a day out, that kind of thing. Maybe you just want to share your creativity. Maybe it's something you do. Um, there's no, not doesn't even have to be photography, but you can take pictures of it. So if you knit or you sew or you paint or you garden, maybe you want to take some photos of it and hold that um, and in a book uh, as your sort of just to remind yourself of your creativity. Or maybe you just want to make photo books and that that's your creativity. Maybe you want to share a story. Do you represent your local uh, village um, group or do you, have you been somewhere that's really touched your heart that you want to tell the story of the people, that kind of thing? Maybe to document an event or a location, you know, such as a birthday party or a weekend away, that kind of thing. Maybe it's for a thank you or a present. I regularly make photo books for my mum, flower photo books or books with little words, poems, that kind of thing. It's quite nice. You know, you can make it really personal, a present or a thank you um, to somebody or possibly for a job or a qualification. You'll see one of these books today that I put together for a qualification with the Guild of Photographers. So as you can see, there's an awful lot of reasons to make a photo book. And these I certainly haven't exhausted all the reasons here. Um, and if you have an idea of why you're making your photo book, this will help guide you as to uh, the level of number of images you're going to put into it, the level and how um, professional or personal it's going to be, um, the, how big the book's going to be, that kind of thing, whether it's going to be hardback, whether it's going to be softback, all these things will affect the, the choices that you make. So it's really important to have a think about why you're actually making your photo book. Just these were the first four, five that appeared on the front screen here. And as you can see, um, there's a little selection. You've got uh, two photography books, the first two there, um, one from Iceland, one from the Outer Hebrides. Uh, the one in the middle is a little book I did on a project with 24 words and um, sayings or sort of ideas uh, when I was in New Zealand. The fourth one there is actually a book of um, mindful photography and poems or words. And the last one on the right is the one I alluded to, which I made for a qualification. And um, that one is a uh, slightly, that's not actually a photo book, that's with blurb, that is a trade book. Um, and it's a softback, but it's quite a lot thicker than the rest. So um, it's, uh, it, it, yeah, I'm going to discuss these further, but this is just to give you an idea. And each of these was made for a different reason. Um, the first two photography books, well, certainly the first one actually was with my family. So uh, had family elements within it. The second one along was very much a photo photography book where I wanted to just explore lots of post-processing. I wanted to hold all the photos I loved from my, uh, my trip. The third one in the middle was like a personal project that I wanted to document um, when I got home I thought it was just too nice not to put it into words and to keep hold of it um, the fourth one it was just again I had these beautiful photos and I didn't want them to disappear so I made a little book and the last one as I mentioned was made specifically for a qualification so this was the other element that I said was very important. Who is your book for? OK, and this is something you need to ask yourself very, very early on when you're making your book, um, because this will have a massive impact on how it comes out at the end and what images you're willing to share, put in, how personal your wording is, um, whether you sort of open yourself up or whether you keep yourself very professional within your book. So is it for yourself alone? Is it for your family? Are you going to share it wider, but not actually have anybody pay for it? Is it going to be published? You know, actually, are you actually going to ask people to pay for this? Um, or is someone actually paying you to produce it for some other reason? And like I say, your audience can have a massive effect, OK, because if you're making it for yourself and no one else is ever going to see this book, you are going to be a lot more open and a lot more personal with the wording or the photos that you share than if you think that you might share it wider to people that you don't, don't actually know. Um, equally, if you're going to share it and make it as a, a family book, then maybe you want to make it really, really personal because that's what you want your family to realise. Or if it's memories, then you really want to sort of angle it towards who it's being made for in the future. So this is a really, really big thing, along with why you're making the book, 
who are you making the book for? And if you think about these two things really early on, you'll have a really, really good idea about kind of the number of photos that you're going to put into it, um, the layout, how big you want your book, how formal you want the book, all these kind of things. So really take the time to think about this up front. I've just got a few examples here. These are each came out of um, some of the books that are available that you can view online. This was came out of my Project 24 book. Um, again, this was a very personal book. This was never meant to go any further than me and my family. Um, in fact, it, it was made by me for me because I just wanted to keep hold of the memories that I had. So it's very personal. The writing is quite personal. It's not so personal that I wouldn't share it, but it is not aimed at um, being interesting to other people. It's more just like my memories. I took these photos in re um, reaction to 24 words or 24 phrases during three weeks when I was in New Zealand. And when I brought them back, I just wanted to hold them somewhere because they were just so special. As you can see, my son and my husband appear in here. Um, and so, you know, that's why it's quite a personal book. But, you know, it's, it's nice to have it. And my son's 17 now. You can see him. He's very tiny there. <laughs> so it, it's just so lovely to have these memories. Um, but the wording in here is quite personal because this is it, I was aiming it at myself and no one else. This is my Iceland book. OK, now this sits somewhere between a family book and a photo book because Iceland is so photogenic. I made so many beautiful photos, but it was a family holiday. The photos, the book was never made to be sold. So it was primarily for me and my family to look through. I love sharing it with people that come to visit as well, because so many people either have been to Iceland or want to go to Iceland. It's lovely. Um, but I do have pictures of my family in there, but they're interspersed very carefully um, throughout. I haven't, it's not what I would call a family photo book. It's, it's a book with some pictures of family and where I've used my family pic people pictures. Um, I've used them like to display and like balance the picture on the other page, just to show an outlook or a feeling. Um, and as you can see here, my son cont contemplating the size of the world and exploring these mossy rocks. This was also in Iceland and this sits sort of somewhere between, you know, I'm, I'm showing a little bit of my personality here on the left hand side of the page. This was a photo I actually took off the back of a horse. So I'm putting a completely different viewpoint into my view on Iceland that you might get in a regular photo book, which is why I like it. But it's completely, you know, it, it, it's not that personal, but it's a little bit of my character. And I've balanced it on the right hand side with a, an image that could be in any book anywhere. These are just two pages out of my um, uh, doc, uh, book that I made for my qualification. And the book basically detailed my whole process from start to finish throughout a whole year of doing this project. And so here you have um, pictures and words. Both are as important as each other. Basically, the, the pictures illustrate the words. Um, and some pages have lots of word pictures on and some pages have lots of words on. It's not a photo book, so the photos are not fantastic photo quality, but they're still good. You know, the blurb books are still top notch with their quality of photos. Just, it's just the paper that's printed on. It's not really, really thick. And it is aimed at being a sort of trade book rather than a photo book. But here, you know, it's it's quite a professional, quite a, an imper not a, impersonal, but it's aimed at being shared with other people. So I was quite, you know, I was aware of that when I was writing this. So how many images? Um, a good question. <laughs> I was speaking to someone last night. She said, I'm going to do a photo book from four days. I've got 2000 photos and I'm going to pick 20. And I went, wow, that's really quite impressive because I'm not sure I could do that. Um, you need to have a think about how many images you're going to put into your photo book. OK, are you going to try and cram as many images into one book in as few pages as possible? Or are you happy to showcase one image per page, even one image per two pages, if you want it to really stand out? Or do you have a set number of images that you want in your book? And that's how big your book's going to be and you're going to balance it out. OK, it will make a massive difference. If you're doing a family photo book from a holiday, you might just be trying to want to get every image that you love into a book for the lowest price. Whereas if you're putting together a book that you want to share that really showcases your photography, then you'll probably be looking at to put a slightly fewer number per page. So this is a, an example of, this is in my Iceland book, 
and we went to, to see the puffins and it's for me it's a once in a lifetime uh, experience so I had a lot of pictures <laughs> and I just couldn't make a choice so in the end I dedicated four pictures uh, four pages within my photo book um, my photo book was actually about 100 pages most of my book photo books tend to be around 100 pages they're not cheap but you know they hold what I want to and I don't have to scrimp and save and make too many hard choices about what to put in but I do make sure that what I put in is really really good so you can see on the top I've got four pictures on each page so I've got eight pictures you can see they all pull together with the color the subject matter the balance the sort of composition everything pulls together really well and then I have two here that I put on different pages separately because I thought they were really lovely I absolutely love this bottom left one and I just felt I felt quite proud for having taken it to be honest I'm no bird photographer so I wanted it to have its own page and then the one on the right just tells a story and so when you look at these four uh, four sides of um, pages they really tell a lovely story of that experience that I had but you can see different amounts of pictures on different pages have a different feel here again in my Iceland book um, I took a lot of pictures on my Iceland trip the one on the right I felt deserved to have its own page it's it's a beautiful landscape now you might argue that maybe I should have put something very simple on the left hand side but in this case I decided to showcase all the textures and all the details and all the colors that kind of were, were in this image on the right hand side but I'd taken um, that captured my eye so it kind of balances the details with the bigger picture on these two but you can see I've got nine pictures there on the left hand side so that's kind of moving up to quite a high number of pictures on a page if you thought nine was a lot <laughs> this is quite a lot um, these are the last two pages of my um, Hebrides uh, photo book and my Hebrides photo book was completely photo book so literally the last two pages had people on you didn't see people throughout the rest of it but it was a photo tour and I wanted to hold these memories we all took pictures of each other on the photo tour and it was just so lovely to have the memories of you know to hold them you know still seven years seven years later I look at these pictures and it brings back every second that I was there so it's really nice to have put them in the back but again I had so many pictures that I wanted to share that I just put so many in and what have we got 16 on a page I think there isn't it um and you know it, it's yeah it's a bit cluttered but actually it does what it wants uh, what I wanted it to do it, it shouts fun it shouts energy it shouts you know having a good time and like I said it's in, in my last two pages of the book so it, it works well so does your book have a flow a narrative or a story okay um, and this again will affect how you lay your book out. Do you want your book to be ordered in chronological order? Do you want it to be a holiday book from the day you arrived to the day you left? Do you want it to be your child's first years to the last five years? You know, it, it kind of um, it, it, it kind of you can make that choice. OK, so you do want it ordered in chronological order or do you want to lay it out according to a flow of the images? So do you want to just lay it out based on if it's a photo book, you might lay it out more on the style of images or telling a story of the images, even though they don't come in the order that you took them. And does it matter when the photos were taken in your project? I mean, I'm running a project at the moment and the same with my um, master craftsman project. I ran it over a year. It didn't matter in the end which order the pictures came in as long as they look cohesive and they went um, ran in a nice fluid uh, way through the book and you want to tell stories you know on pages it, it's really nice to have pages relate to each other and to tell the bigger story these books the, these two images just shouted to be opposite each other in the book because they tell this wonderful story of the rain pouring down in the Hebrides and the, and the sheep hiding in the um uh, in the bus shelters and it's just it just makes me smile every time I look at them they're both black and white they're both slightly different orientations but they work really well to tell a story of the of the weather um, again while we were out in the Hebrides we went to see uh, Donald uh, Mackay and um, we, I took a lovely portrait photo I got his story and then I took um, some of these wonderful detail shots of Harris Tweed and I just wanted to bring it all together and these two pages together again tell a wonderful story of this individual and the whole history of um, the Harris Tweed on Harris um, and it's just yeah some of them are just phone shots but you know when they're smaller it doesn't matter too much but I think the two pictures really tell a lovely story together 
These are photos of some more photo books that I have. They aren't online, so I just took some shots of them, sat on the floor. But you can see in each of them, I've told a story of what I wanted. The left-hand side one was when we climbed Machu Picchu, you know, some of the hardest moments on the, on the walk and the beautiful views. You know, you can see this stunning landscape photo and then the action and a bit of words. The one on the right, when we were in the Amazon, we went to this um, fruit plantation. So we tried all these different fruits and things. And again, I wanted to tell the story of the rain pouring down, us tasting these fruits, which were disgusting. You know, my son holding a bunch of bananas. Those eight pictures there tell such a wonderful story and it brings all the images together uh, on two pages there. Now, this hasn't made it into a photo book yet, but these shall be appearing in my next um, next YouTube video that I make for you. I was in Norfolk uh, back in the UK a few weeks ago now, and this is just the start of me thinking about bringing images together. And here, these images were all taken on the same day, but in slightly different locations on the beaches. And they weren't actually on the same beach either, but you can see there's a, an element that's tying them all in together. Now, I haven't decided how they're all going to lay out in the book yet, but you can see that there's elements that are going to tie them together. It might be that the, the one on the left has a page on its own. The four on the right have a page next to them all together. Or I might split out the four or I might find some others. But it's just kind of getting an idea. You can put them together sometimes in um, PowerPoint pages and play with them before you get them into the, uh, the book if you want. But you're looking for things to bring images together that will tell a story. So words, how many and how much information or what type of information are you going to put into your book? I've done books with poems, with just locations, so just the details of where I took the photos in. I've had stories. Sometimes, actually, I haven't ever done it, but some people might like to put the technical info, you know, the shutter speed, that kind of thing in. Um, descriptions. Uh, somebody I'm working with at the moment is just putting a book together on um, plants and weeds. And she's found the descriptions of the plants and then added a bit of story to them as well. And that's really nice. Or just notes. You know, again, I'm doing another project in the woodlands and I'm keeping notes in my book, um, my notebook. And I shall bring those as um, notes into the final book. So I shall take them, lift them. I may even photograph them because it's just fun to hold them. But again, you know, think about how much you want in them. Are you going to have them on the same page as your images? Are you going to have them on a facing page? Or are you just going to put them in one section in the book and not have them amongst the photos? Again, a really good thing to have a think about. So again, just a few examples. This comes out of my mindful um, small book that I did with some poems and writing. And on most of the pages, not all of them, but most of them, I did a picture on the right hand side and a poem or some kind of writing on the left. And then I had the title of the picture underneath each of the photos as well. And so I kept the writing, um, not, not on all the pages, but I tried to keep the writing on one page and the picture on the right uh, separate page to try and keep them clean and keep them separate. This is my um, trade book, this is my Master Craftsman book. And you can see I mix the words with the picture. And as I said at the start, the words were as important as the pictures. The pictures kind of illustrate what I'm talking about in my words. So I fitted them in amongst the words. Sometimes I had they had a page to themselves, but more likely they just kind of appeared within the text um, to show what I was talking about. This is another page from my Hebrides book. And this one you can see on each of these pages, you have you can choose to bring the title of the book in as well. So I kept the title of the book in on each um, page. And then I also put the location or something to remind me of where it is. So it's uh, it works really, really nicely like that. And, uh, you know, for a location book or a photo book, if people are looking it, then you can I can hand it to people and they can make notes of where I went or where they might like to go and photograph next time. So are you including people photos? OK, now this is quite a, an interesting one. If it's a holiday or travel book, do you want people images in it? OK, again, it comes back to is it a personal book? Um, or is it a professional book? Is it one you're going to share with people? If it's a family photo book, the chances are you're going to have a lot of people pictures in it. Um, if you have people images, how many and what part will they play in the book? And I alluded to this a little bit earlier. So this is comes out of the Iceland book. And again, my son makes a, a wonderful appearance in it. 
fantastic. Uh, great big crater lake, lovely landscape picture here on the left hand side kind of gets the feeling of, um, you know, the location, the, the massiveness of it. And then we went down to the lake. We actually walked down into the bottom. And then I took this picture of my son sat on a rock, just contemplating, looking across the water. We've been throwing some stones, that kind of thing. Again, it's not too people orientated, but it gives a feeling. It adds to the story of the location. And as it was a family photo book, it brings some personality into it. Again, another time in that holiday, um, on the right hand side, you've got this fantastic waterfall at the top and then at the bottom we all had a lot of fun going under the waterfall or walking right up to the edge we got absolutely soaked the memories are super but this is my husband and my son just showing the balance between you know this waterfall and how tiny they are again bringing the personal element into it but not too much um, because I still wanted this to be primarily a photo book Again, you see these pictures just to illustrate, you know, this is like full on people photos, full on two pages of people photos. Again, if it's a family photo book, you might intersperse pages like this throughout your whole family photo book because it tells a great story of the, the time you had together. Um, regarding the photos, black and white or colour, do you want to keep them separate or do you want to mix them up? And you're happy to mix them up on a page. Now, this is really personal as to whether you are happy to mix black and white with colour photos or not. I have no problem with it personally, especially in a photo book, as long as um, the photos work, still work together. I don't throw black and whites and colour together just for the sake of it. They do normally have to have some relating element. And here on the top, you can see it's the same piece of uh, land in these photos, but taken at different locations, different light. Um, completely different treatment, but it's quite nice to see them in two different sort of atmospheres here. The ones at the bottom are two different reflections. Again, the one on the right was in really hard sunlight, and I just love the sort of sunlight there and the edge of the rock and the clouds peeping out. Um, the one on the left was just the beautiful clouds going across the sky. And so you've got a good balance between black and whites, and it's just what I chose to edit it in at the time. These ones show um, a link between colour uh, on the photos. So in both of them, the top one, they were actually taken at the same time from the same location, but they are two different sort of photos completely. One's a close up, one all about the crashing waves. The other one is a landscape one, all about the feeling of the location. But you can see they tie together with the same colours, the same elements. The ones on the bottom, you've got the bigger landscape photo. And then the one on the right is a zoom in on the, um, the reflection on the floor. Again, the colours tie perfectly together. Um, and this is probably one where I wouldn't have gone black and white and colour just because I think the, the colours work so well together and they tell a bigger story. Orientation of your book. OK, so we're talking here landscape, portrait or square. And you have these different options when you go in to get your book. Um, just be aware that if you start planning your book in landscape and then you want to change it to square halfway through, you're going to find it a little bit tricky. So you need to have a think up front about what shape. I do a lot of square books because I find um, you can put multiples of images really nicely in a square book. You can put landscape or you can put portrait images really nicely in a square book. Um, so I quite like square books to use. Think about the overriding orientation of all your most of your images. If they are mostly landscape, then you might be better going for a landscape book. If they are mostly portrait, you might be better going for a portrait book. Um, and landscape books can showcase a really wide vista sort of type images. So you'll see some examples now. Um, so these are just some of the books that I have on my shelf that I've made. And you can see I've made square books. I've made big square books, little square books, um, softback, hardback. Uh, the one on the top left is a landscape sort of book. The one on the top right um, here is your um, trade book, uh, which is a portrait book. So this one's actually upside down. <laughs> That's not great, is it? Um, but this is just to show, you know, in, in a... Um, uh, a, a square format you can put landscape images one uh, on top of each other and they work great 
You can also use portrait images. Again, they work great. Generally, in a square book, you're probably going to, I know I won't say it's a rule, but you're probably only going to put one portrait image in. Otherwise, they start to get a little bit lost if you took, put two portrait images next to each other in a square. You then have massive areas of white in room above. But, you know, four portrait images can look great as well in a square. So it's just kind of, um, you know, courses for courses. And again, here, similar uh, images, similar colours, similar subject matter, but not the same um, to complement each other on opposite pages. This is the landscape book you saw, and you can see the top two images are very much the landscape images. OK, they're made to be in a landscape book. It, it, this was made to showcase some of my early photography here in the Netherlands. The ones on the bottom, you can see a landscape book works really well with two portraits next to each other. Uh, and again, this tells the story of Utrecht as a location. And, you know, you get, get all these different images here together and the, the four portraits or the two portraits per page work really well in a landscape book as well. I love the square books because you can also kind of lay them out in a, a lovely juxtaposition of landscapes and portraits and Blurb creates these wonderful layouts for you if you want to use them. I tend to dump an awful lot of them or make them my own as I go through. But, you know, they, they give a really good starting point and then you can sort of bring images in to tell stories and it looks, you know, you can balance quite a formal image with some more relaxed uh, feeling images. Here again, again, a square book, and you can, again, shows you how you can use multiples of different shaped images. You've got square images and you've got landscaped images here. Again, showing the balance of telling a story. Um, this is a little bit more personal. This was a New Zealand book. So, um, you know, this, this is I've got a few family photos in here. But it, again, it tells the story of the location of the time we took the photos. And this is a small photo book. Um, but this is a square one and you can see how well square books work with multiples of squares, fours or nines or even sixteens. Um, they work really well within the square feeling. Uh, backgrounds. OK, so I'm talking about what is behind your images in the books. Um, you can add images behind your images as a, as a background. You can add color. Just ask yourself if these elements add or detract from the images you are showing in the book. OK, and there's a couple of examples here. Um, I'm just going to show you. This is uh, I'm just going to show you this as an example. What can happen? Um, OK, so here you've got a plain white background. These two images really jump out. You can see them. They're really strong. Now, if I fancy putting a color behind them, I could pick a color within the image. And I did. I went in, I used a color dropper and I picked this. It now ties it together, but I feel that you now lose the images a little bit. They kind of go into the page rather than jumping out. Um, again, it depends what's on the next page and on the page before it. But what I did was here was I kept the same colour, but I just reduced the opacity, which is something you can do without any problem at all. So this is the same colour blue, but I've just reduced the opacity back to like 15 percent, something like that. So it's no longer white. It's got a little bit of color, but the color is not the overriding element here. Again, I probably wouldn't do this if I had white on the other page. I would then want to keep the same color on two facing pages. Um, I might intersperse a color, two color pages uh, through an awful lot of white and then and I have another couple of color pages, but only kind of where it works. It's a little bit like those of you that use Instagram. Sometimes you put color behind your stories. Sometimes you keep them white. It's just kind of depends on the feel that you want to bring to your images. Um, I actually don't put color behind my images. This isn't a photo book I made. This is one a friend made from a trip that we went away on. But you can see you've got a sort of a creamy beige on the left hand side and you've got a navy on the right hand side. Um, there's nothing wrong with it. It's just not something I prefer to do. This was this was a personal photo book for the five of us that went away on the trip. Um, so it really didn't matter how professional it looked. Um, but it's lovely. You know, it, it's it's her choice. And um so it, it's a really nice book to, to look at, but it's just a, a way to show you how colour can come behind images. This was a book we made as a um, sort of a leaving um, a book for the leavers from my son's school year. Um, and behind each set of images, you will see that there is uh, another image. So this one has the grass of the, the location. So it's quite green. This one here, we took a detail of the blue to put behind because it was mostly blue elements. 
Here, this is the location that they stayed in. So we had a nice picture behind and then sort of threw the pictures on top. And here you just used it, this sort of um, uh, fountain as a background. It kind of adds a bit of fun, a bit of extra story to it. Um, but it's not what I would, I, I would say it's more of a relaxed photo book. So if you're family photo books, it's great. But I wouldn't encourage it too much um, in sort of books that are, you're going to be used in, using for more sort of um sharing professional that kind of books that said I had somebody again a couple of days ago and she's she's got this beautiful image that she's using as a backdrop um, which is actually a flower image but it works really well but we're just toning it back to the right opacity so that it tells the story in the way you want it not overriding the rest of the pictures um, use of page space and layout okay there's a few different things on this page now do you want to keep your pages separate or do you want to create double page spreads? OK, I haven't shown you anything yet, but I'm going to show you a double page spread in a minute. It is very dependent on the type of images you're using and the type of book you're making. If you want a lot of double page spreads in your book, you probably want to be looking at making sure your book is something called lay flat. If it doesn't lay flat, what you'll end up with the middle doing is having it sort of coming out as a gentle sort of heart shape in the middle. And if you've got something that's important in the middle of the image, you will lose that in one of these books if it's not a lay flat. If there's a lay flat book, the lay flat books lay absolutely <laughs> flat so that the, the image is completely seamless. Um, and then they work really, really well with double page spreads. I would always suggest, though, you try not to get people or really important elements right in the middle of the image that's going to sit on the crease. But you'll see that when you put them into the book. Um, do you want white space or borders? So all of my images have white space around them. Um, or do you want some borders? Do you want big borders, little borders? Uh, again, we're going to have a look at that in a second. How do your images relate to each other? Now, I've kind of alluded to this throughout the presentation, talking about what comes on facing pages. Um, I think it's really important that both facing pages talk to each other and don't come through as completely individual pages that you've just thrown into a book. I like to see the seamlessness move from one page to the next. Even when you turn over a page, I like there to be some kind of connection to the previous page. Do you like facing images to be the same dimensions and orientation? Are you happy to have a landscape and a portrait or a landscape and four squares? You know, again, I love it because I think it mixes it up. It does make it very clean if you have exactly the same on both sides. So if you've got a landscape and a landscape or four squares and four squares. But equally, I don't think there's anything wrong at all in balancing um, different orientations. It can sometimes make it bring an extra bit of interest to the, uh, the book. Um, and do you want pages to be, be related to each other? So you've got images relating to each other, but also pages, and that's facing pages and pages over. So are they going to tell a story? So this is um, one, pick, one book I have. And this, as I said, mentioned, is not a lay flat book. OK, so you've got a double page spread here. And you can see that when, when the pages come into the middle, I have lost the detail going down the middle, okay? It's now no longer seamless because the two pages. So if this kind of image is really important to you, if you have more than a couple in your book, I would suggest you, you look at lay flat books. And this was made many, many years ago when Blurb didn't do lay flat, and I believe Blurb do do lay flat books now. Sometimes you have to pay a little bit more for these lay flat books because the binding is slightly different to allow it to happen, or you don't, aren't allowed to quite as many pages in your book because um, it needs the space to move. So just be aware of those kind of things if you want lay flat. But you can see it kind of makes a real, real sort of statement if you have an image across two pages. Um, this is what I mean about balancing your images, keeping a story together between two images. Again, a uh, few different landscapes and squares. Again, the, on the left-hand side, you've got the bigger pictures. On the right-hand side, you've got the details and the personal interest. Again, it's just balancing it and making sure that both pages are sort of related to each other. Again, this was in Peru, um, trip to Cusco, all the doors, they just sort of wowed me. Um, again, you can see it's not a lay flat book. It doesn't just, you know, you have to hold it open when you do this. 
Um, but you can see I've kind of mixed and matched here. I've got four, nine squares on the left and six portrait images on the right. Um, but I've done it. I wanted to have all of these in here. So I've kind of put them on different pages according and had got all these pictures because honestly, this kind of portrays exactly what it felt that every door was blue. And there were so many amazing doors. And it's not just the one, do the doors I saw here, you know, I've got more photos than this, but it's such a lovely memory of all these fantastic blue doors. Um, this is an example of thinking about how much white space you actually have between your images. Um, these are, this isn't a book page, but this will be coming into a book. Whether these four images actually really work together is another question, um, but I've just put them together so you can see. And here you have quite narrow lines between them and they all sit very neatly together. And you can imagine them either in a landscape book, like on this page, or you can imagine them in a square with um, sort of a similar space around. However, you could spread them out a little bit and then the images become more individual. OK, so they're now not quite so closely linked to each other. Um, they have more space around them, but then the images aren't so big. So then you can't see so much detail. So it's again, it's a little bit of a balance between the, the feeling you want to bring and how much you want to be able to see of the images. This one, I've got rid of the white stuff and I don't like the, losing the, the, the borders at all. And it's not something I would choose to do at all, especially when you see them kind of linking in. It just looks wrong for these photos, at least. Um, so it's not something I would ever do normally um, unless I'm trying to put masses and masses of photos. And it's not too important whether they run into each other or not. But just so you can see the last three, you know, going from a uh, sort of standard size white to a big white to absolutely no, no border at all. So it's nice to see the difference. And don't forget, you can make your layouts different. OK, just because you've got four squares does not mean to have to say you have to put them in a square with each other. You can then put these two either across. If you're working on a landscape, you could have them all on one page. Or if you're working on a square book, you might have two squares and two squares on two different pages in your book. Um, yeah, it just it's it's horses courses. It's what you like and the feeling that you like from your images. Um, if you're working with a project, what I would suggest is that you work through each of the previous slides. Watch this through if you haven't made some notes on the way and note your answers to the questions that have been asked. You know, uh, what? how many photos do you want? Who's your book for? Um, why are you writing this book? But something about the words, all these kind of things. You can work through them and write down your answers. You'll have a really good idea about how you want your book to end up for your project. Then make sure you've created a collection in Lightroom or a folder on your computer with all the images that you want to use in your album. OK, it's much easier if they sit in one album than if you've got to go and pick them from different albums to bring them into making the photo book. Um, sometimes it's quite nice if you want to break the images up further in your um, folder so that you have, you know, pages 5 to 10, 20 to 30, whatever. And then you have smaller groups of images. Again, it depends on how many images you're working on. If you're going to bring 200 images all at once into Blurb, it will bring them in in the order that you bring them in. If you bring them in in groups of 10, it will slot them in as they come in. So you can work with each group a little bit easier. You could have a play in Photoshop or use PowerPoint to look at some layouts before you move to the book software. Um, I sometimes do that, but I quite like just playing around in the book software because I've used it for so long. So I find that very easy. Be aware if you are passionate about the outcome of your book, it will not be a fast process. I've taken weeks. I've even taken months when it's not too important how fast I do it. Um, just be aware to keep your enthusiasm up. So if you let it drift too long, you might lose any kind of attachment to your book or any enthusiasm towards making it. But the more you are prepared with ideas and words and layout plans and sort of have some ideas in your head, the faster you can make your book. But don't go ahead long into it and think you'll be done in two hours because there's I don't think I've ever made a book, photo book in two hours um, because it, it, the only way you could do that is if you just literally let the book do what, it, you know, you can have the, an auto fill option and you just throw the photos at it. Um, otherwise, you will take some time to do this. 
And these are just some examples that I'm going to be making, hopefully, at some point. I've got a few little projects on the go. This one is all about leaves and water. So we've got reflections, we've got views through water. And you can see there's a collection of images here, and some of them might work well on their own pages. Some of them might work together. You know, this, this image here and this image are very, very different. So I might not want them on facing pages. Um, this image here and this image here have quite a dark feeling. These two images here have the leaves. So you start putting images together and figuring out what might work together and what might not. This is a beautiful, simple image with two little, three little leaves on. I think this one would probably deserve, deserve its own page so that it really sort of makes the, the, makes the subject matter sing. This is a project I'm working on at the moment um, about trees. This is a whole collection of images and I have no idea how they're all going to sit on pages at the moment. But you can see that some are landscape, some are portrait, and I've just kind of pulled them into little groups at the moment for the feeling that they give. I mean, this, this, these are a group of sort of six by four landscapes, but this image here is very different to this image. You know, they might not complement each other. They certainly would not complement each other on one page, I don't believe. They might work on facing pages. Equally, you know, something like this and this, you might say, well, actually it's not, but that might look like a crop of that. So do I really want those two on the same page or facing pages? Are they too samey? That kind of thing. Um, you might have a, a favorite photo. You know, I love this photo. Um, and so it might just like have a page on its own. This one here, I think looks a little bit like a sort of gnarled uh, animal of some sort. You may have a poem or I might have a story opposite it. Um, to display. So this is just kind of my thought process working through on a project. These ones you're going to see in the next YouTube video that I make. These are some photos that I took from Norfolk. Again, a collection of, of, of hundreds that I've got. I have no idea how book, big my book's going to be at the moment, but it's certainly going to be, you know, probably over 20 pages with multiple images on pages. Um, but I've started to gather them here. You can see my groups of squares. This one is the same subject matter, but it didn't work as a square. So it will probably, you know, this one might fit opposite a page with these four on the other side. These two will probably work quite well together. This one probably a standalone. This one, again, a standalone. So you can see I've just started pulling these together as ideas. Um, this I've done it just in um, PowerPoint here when I was making this presentation, because I quite like it. You can sort of create different layouts. And again, some examples about how they might work on facing pages. These probably wouldn't be on the same page because I think there'd be just too much information. Same, these just give this massive open feeling, two different locations, two quite different feeling photos, but they give this same feeling overall. So I just wanted to run you through some examples of um, some photo books that I've got here for you. Um, and there's just a small collection within my blurb um, section. I will drop a link to um, where you can view one of them. And then what you need to do is just pick one. And if you scroll down to the bottom of the page, you will see all my other books, okay, at the bottom. You can um, go and view any of these other books that's sitting in there later on. But just to show you very briefly, if you click on preview, each of my books has a full page preview. It has, you can see every single page of the book, so you can work through them all gradually. Um, this was the Outer Hebrides um, photo book. And the lovely thing about bird books is you kind of click on them and um, you get taken through the books like as if you're turning the real pages. This book was a photo book primarily. Um, I've got a few people pictures in it, but they're all at the end. Um, I wanted to tell a story of the location. This is where I stayed, for example, at the front. And then I went on to sort of balance the photos throughout. Um, and you can see there's a lot of, lot of different photos. There's a lot of different post-processing techniques used. But I've tried to balance each of the two pages as I went along um, at a time. And it's, it's worked quite well um, here in regards to colours, um, subject matter. You know, here, this is, this is all about the details of the waves. I then went on to do a little bit about birds and animals. So I just blocked these all together. So I started with sheep, birds, a bit more sheep, some sheep and some horses. And then I went back to some landscapes. So I tended to keep the elements together. So I've got two sort of very more graphic images here and they're together. Um, this is the story I showed you earlier. Again, colours, locations, 
you know, the, the, I just tried to put them together. This is a story of Harris Gin, and I just kind of combined it with quite a small photo, actually, on this one side, because I just wanted it to balance the, the details. Some gates I saw. This was a day when it was pouring with rain. You know, just little things that all kind of make each of these pages work together. Look at the back. We can have a look at another one here. So if we have a, have a look at the Iceland photo book here. This was a sort of balance between a family photo book and a photo book. And again, you will see the balance between, again, it started with a little bit of the back, how we got there, you know, the plain photos. Um, and then basically this, this is an order of places that we went. But you can see I've tried to link the images together. You know, you've got the little church in both of these images locations, storytelling, you know, when I've got two images from the same location, I've tried to put them together. These images, I think, work really well because of the lines that go through them and the colours. Again, I've chosen two portrait images next to each other. These two images give a real feeling of space, more about waterfalls, again, sort of the landscape. They, they sit together quite nicely, even though sometimes they're black and white, sometimes they're colour, because, you know, like this one here, I wanted to really describe the colour, the vibrant yellow against the black rocks, and then these are really hard black rocks. So you've got kind of got the juxtaposition of the softness and the colour versus the sort of harsh cragginess of the, the landscape. Um, and then just, yeah, just bringing them together and balancing them out. You know, I like this one because there's lots of little lupins and then these are all stuck up like little flowers out of the landscape as well. And they've got a similar horizon line. Just little things like that is what I notice. Um, this one's all about colour. So you've got just like the pop of colour here in it. And again, you've just got the pop of colour. So I just use very small elements that sort of hold images together in these. Let's just go and have a quick look at um, another one down here. Uh, we'll have a look at The Beauty Goes Unnoticed because this is a bit of a different book here. This was a, um, this is a softback. This is only 30 pages. It's quite short book for me. <laughs> um, and basically it was a book to showcase some images. But when I took these images, I actually wrote quite a lot about them at the time. I wrote things and we discussed them in groups. Uh, it was on a mindful photography course. And so I wanted to sort of hold all that stuff that I'd written. Sometimes I'd written a poem, sometimes I'd written words, sometimes I'd picked, um, this, these ones were inspired by um, Simon and Garfunkel's song. I actually create a video, uh, it's on YouTube of these. And yeah, I just kind of tried to balance and keep it really clean. You'll see majority of them are black and white images as well. So it's, it's a very clean, very crisp, um, very honest, very simple book, this one. And we have, um, let's just see, if you press see more, you can go and see any of the, you've worked through all the books here. Um, next, let's just, I just want to get to the, this Project 24 one here. This is very different to the last one. Okay, so the last one was all black and white, very simple. This is a collection of images I took while I was in New Zealand for three weeks based on a selection of words that I picked up from the internet, from a, a website. And so each of the pages is dedicated to one of these words. And what I wanted to do was explain how I came up with the idea of each of these photos, because everybody interprets a word or a suggested sentence in a different way. And so I just wanted to remind myself and remind anybody else who was looking why I'd taken these images. But again, they sit together quite nicely. You know, these don't have to be, the words weren't in the book, weren't in the order I was given to them. I, I put them in an order so that they matched colour-wise or feel-wise um, to the images that ran through the book. And then lastly, I just wanted to show you this last book, which is a trade book rather than a photo book. But just in case any of you want to write a book that's a bit more descriptive, that's got words, but pictures sort of in the same uh, amount of balance as each other. This is a softback. This isn't the photo, the paper isn't such good quality photo wise, but it's still absolutely perfect for what I wanted. And um, what it is, is it's a description. You can see I've already got a contents page, so it's a little bit formal. There's an awful lot of writing in here, 
And what it is, is it's a description of my whole process of my experience. I've, I've discussed other photographers. I've um, put in my inspiration. If I've used other photographers' images, um, I've put links so you directly know that they're not my photos. Um, and, yeah, I've just worked through all of these. And, again, this was just put to a panel of judges as I sat um, there to, to present my presentation. Um, this is my artist statement that sits in there. And then what I'd done was I created a whole load of multiple exposures. And so then you have the 20, all sets of 20, and you have the final image on the right-hand side, and then you have the two images that went in to make each. And then I describe how I came about making that image on the right from those two images on the left. So there's a little bit of a description on all these 20 images. And you can see this, every page is very, very similar um, laid out. And then at the end, I just had uh, a lasting page, which was, you know, um, a thank you to the people that helped me through the project. Um, so I hope you've enjoyed um, those run through um, those images. Um, hopefully it's given you a really good idea about making some photo books and you've had a good idea of, you know, what blurb photo books look like. As I said, I will be doing a follow up presentation which will um, actually run you through step by step how to make a blurb book. That's what my plan is anyway. Um, but hopefully this will give you a good starting point. Go through, go back and have a look. Think about, you know, answering all those questions about who your book's for, how many words, pictures, that kind of thing you want in there. And it will just give you a really, really good idea about how to get started. Um, as I mentioned, it will take a while. Don't expect it to be done in an hour. But the more times you do it, the more the better idea you have, like anything else of, um, you know, what's involved. If you've enjoyed this presentation, um, I'd love you to give me a thumbs up. Um, do like the page, subscribe the page. That would be absolutely fantastic. Do let anybody else know if you'd like. Um, it's always lovely to see new people joining and subscribing. Um, and if you have any comments, if you do something different to what I've suggested, or if you have any questions about what something I've tried to explain and not managed, for example, very well, then please do ask me in the comments. I always um, answer everything that appears on my um, YouTube channel. And I look forward to you joining me for the next YouTube video, which will be, as I mentioned, um, actually creating a book with some of my images. So thanks for joining me and I look forward to seeing you soon.